stuff that you will need to know about taking care of suits. I mean, these are expensive items, and if you have noticed, a couple of shooters that don't brush their suits or anything like that, or even wash them. I mean, these things need to be taken care of in order for them to look new for years to come. Um, next slide. Yeah, we know it's early. Everybody kind of needs to wake up. <laughs> what is a fursuit? This is a fursuit. Where's my, where's, where's Leone? That's a fursuit. Okay. Basically, what your character will look like. Next slide. The guinea pig. The guinea pig. Okay, how to properly take care of your suit. <clears throat> well, for one, when you get your suit, you need to brush it every time you take it off. This is important. Because if you do not brush it, the fur will mat and it will curl up and it won't look nice at all. So, um, we have different brushes for you to look at. If you want to come up and look at them, we can pass them, we can around, pass them around as well. We've, we've got a, a few different examples. <laughs> this brush is, you could call it an ethnic brush or something like that. Um, it's got some hard bristles if you want to feel them. These are really good for first suit heads. And the reason why I say it is because the fursuit head is, I guess, the most fragile of the fursuit. Um, and you don't want to mess up the fur. So, come here. Oh, okay. Yeah, just spray it on your head, 
spread a little bit in here. Um, your feet pause, your body do everything. And you want to make sure, again, that it's completely dry and then you brush it out every time you take this off. I guarantee your suit will be much better looking, much, you know, smells nice, because you don't like stinky suitors. Anybody like stinky suitors? No. Okay. <laughs> Um, another thing that's good to have is dryer sheets. Um, you just basically take one, put it in your feet paws, your hand paws if you want to. A good thing to put it in is your head. Just stick it in the mouth. Don't keep it in there all day though. It, it will really make you kind of high. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're going to store your suit in a box, I mean, for one, make sure everything is dry before you do. But you can store it with dryer sheets so it kind of maintains that that fresh smell. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a good thing to do. What's up? Yes? So, like, some dryer sheets are just really pungent. You know what I mean? So would it be okay to, like, put them in, like, a plastic bag or, like, half close it so, like, not as much of Yeah, like, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah totally. Like, some of them are, like, crazy. Yeah. They smell so strong. Yeah. It's like, you don't want that to be the floor seat smell. It's like, did you just jump out of the dryer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Definitely. Um, okay. You're kind of going through the demonstration now. The demonstration? Well, yes. What's the next slide? Yes. <laughs> we, we did kind of cover this already. We got a little ahead of ourselves. But, but like I said, there are a few different commercial agents available for keeping your first suit clean. But you definitely need to make sure whatever you use is antimicrobial. You can't just use regular off-the-shelf Febreze. It might help get rid of the smell, but it's not going to fix the underlying problem. You need to keep the suit clean, otherwise you're going to get sick. I know everybody here um, that's been to a con before has heard of something called the con crud. That's usually from not cleaning a person. That's usually what that comes from. Yeah, and usually when you put the head on the trees and the headless lounge, that's how you get that. People don't clean their stuff. Um, <laughs> how to properly wash your suit. Okay, this is very important because if you mess this up, you will mess up your suit. You can wash your suit in a washer. Um, a lot of people wash their suits hand wash because they kind of are afraid to wash their suit in a washer. Um, I wash my suits in washers. All you're going to do is just if you have padding, Take out the padding um, and turn it inside out and zip it up. You put it in the washer. If you have a delicate setting, good. Um, where's wool light? Did you bring that? No, they okay. all want room. The best detergent is wool light for your suits um, because it's very delicate. They, they make a wool light light and a wool light dark. Yes. Anytime, any wool light will do. It just. The dark helps some of the darker fabrics, like especially the black furs, from bleeding. And if you have a suit that has multiple colors, like white and black, you definitely want to try to avoid that. And you never, ever use hot water. Always cold. <laughs> Always on a cool setting and delicate setting. After it's done cleaning, um, you can put it in a dryer if you have an air flux in. If you do not, then you just turn it right side out and hang it up to drop. Um, if you do that though, you need to brush it every couple of hours because it'll continuously keep the fur going the right direction. Um, if you do have an air flow setting, just put it in there for, what is it, like 30 minutes? 30 minutes. If it's still a little damp, it's okay. You can hang it up and, you know, put a fan on it and such and keep it brushed. What's your introduction and then we're going to walk several of the other patterns. Oh, just to be absolutely sure what the air flow setting that the heat doesn't come on because there's some dryers that actually will put something yeah. on the air flow. Yeah. And yeah. there's actually been suits ruined though it's like from that. So any, any type of heat in a mechanical sure. yeah. mm -hmm. Any type of heat in a mechanical dryer for this suit will not only shrink <coughs> the backing for the fabric, but it will melt the tips of the fur and cause them to curl up. You will not be able to get that matting back out. It will yeah. stay that way permanently. So there is there on the fan if you don't know. If you don't know if your dryer has an airflow setting that does not use heat, 
Don't put it in the dryer. Yeah, exactly. Just hang it up. And dry it. One, one possibility, if you have any scraps left over from making it, put a scrap in there and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you have scrap fur, you're more yeah, than welcome to try it. it and see what happens. Test it. If because not, it doesn't you, destroy you, the scraps. Nothing, nothing's wrong with doing it by hand. If you really want to do it by hand, go ahead. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, when you're doing the hand pause, I didn't bring the mesh bags, but you, you've heard of mesh bags before, right? Okay, you put the hand pause in there. You don't have to necessarily turn them inside out. Um, you can put that hand pause and tail in there and do the same exact thing when you do the body suits. Um, for the feet paws in the head, you can clean those. Don't put them in the washer, though. I, please don't. A lot of suit makers, I mean, they, <laughs> they, uh, Think you can put them in there? I wouldn't necessarily because of the foam. My head would be out completely out of foam, um, and I would be afraid something would, you know, damage it. Well, the, 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 can you go there? <clears throat> the tricky part with foam, most things, tails especially, are filled with polyfill, or if you have padded paw pads, uh, paw pads on your or your hand paws, those are normally polyfill. But if it's foam. I wouldn't advise putting it in any type of washing machine because you can get some water that's in the core of that foam that won't dry in a very timely manner and it will grow mold. And you, unless, you don't want unless that. they're, you, unless you can take them out, of course, then then that's fine. But um, for the, like for the head and feet pods, you can clean them. Just take some wool light and a little bit of uh, water and just touch up the spots that need to be cleaned. I do that with my uh, Neapolitan suit. I have white everywhere, so I always touch up the feet pods because they get dirty after a con or an event. Um, and you can do the same thing with your heads and put them to a fan as soon as possible and let them dry. And that's that's basically it. What you need to do for cleaning your suit? Yes. So like for like all foam heads and I have my own. It's like how do you like if like after a long weekend? How do you like if it's really starting to get cardy? Is Lysol really just gonna help or like? If, some people that sweat real bad and they get it into the To really clean the inside of the head, yeah. um, the Lysol will help during the con just to keep it kind of clean for while you're wearing it. But when you get it home, uh, it, get some um, isopropyl alcohol and water in a spray bottle. And don't saturate the inside of the head. But, um, get it wet enough that you can take a cloth and kind of dab it yeah. and, and clean and everything clean. because that will kill the bacteria it will also help clean it. And then if you have to clean the outside, just uh, do it over a sink with a little bit of uh, cold water and wool light and a rag and like spot clean the fur. But don't, if you, especially with the foam heads, the resin masks aren't such a big deal because it's going to dry underneath. But the foam heads, you can't saturate the foam. Yeah. yeah. And again, don't submerge your head in water. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, using Lysol or whatever, after a while you will feel something, something sticky inside your head. So just use that to clean it out completely. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's all you have to do for cleaning it. And make sure you do it correctly or your fur is going to come out bad. <laughs> Alright, what to wear underneath your fur suit? This is important. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is important. Don't wear t-shirts and... Don't, don't just wear like a bra and, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea is you're trying to keep the sweat from your body from really saturating your fursuit. You need to have a layer of clothing on top of you, so it, it not only helps kind of control that, but it's also there to keep you cooler. If that fur is directly on your skin, you're going to roast. You need to have some kind of buffer there between you. And you're going to become a sponge, and that's not fun. <laughs> Would you recommend wearing Under Armour if we're wearing a partial, like under our clothes? It or still not? helps, believe it or yeah. not. Because I, I used to, I started off suiting as, as a partial. I, I didn't get a fursuit until about a year and a half after I started suiting. And even then, the Under Armour really does help. You do stay a little bit cooler when you're wearing it, but it, it helps control you from, because even if you're wearing regular clothes and you have like arm sleeves and leg sleeves, you're still going to sweat, and your clothes are still going to get wet. Take breaks, people. <laughs> but, okay, Under Armour. It doesn't necessarily need to be Under Armour, because we know how expensive that is. So you can use, like, Starter, which is the most cheapest, I believe. And that, that's uh, Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> you can find it anywhere, basically. What, what's uh, the, like, what are some of the brand names? Uh, like, off-brand Under Armour, <laughs> uh, Starter.
is probably the best. Starter? Uh, Target sells one that's called... Nike makes one called Combat. Uh, you can get them at motorcycle shops sell good Under Armour equipment. Uh, ski, a ski shop, but you want to look for cool gear more than stuff that's going to trap heat because they do make two different kinds, obviously. Uh, you do want the, like I said, the cooler gear underneath. Uh, that way it, it absorbs the sweat, but it doesn't trap the heat inside with you too. Yes. All right, um, so what kind of material is that that I would be looking for? Lycra. Lycra, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you're definitely mean, not going to want anything made out of like fleece or wool. Yeah, okay. yeah no. You want like, it, it almost, if it feels like spandex, you're looking at the right stuff. So, like this basically. Not all of it is really long sleeve. It can In be fact, short sleeve too. Most of the time I do wear a short sleeve. I'm just wearing a long sleeve now to demonstrate. Uh, it does, like I said, it's all about absorbent. You can see now my, this thing is absolutely soaked, but my suit is very relatively dry because of this, okay? It does keep you cool, it absorbs all that moisture. Uh, they do make also long sleeve pants, uh, but again, you are trying to keep cool, and sometimes the longer sleeve stuff can help exceed the heat, but in the long run, it is the best, pop best option for underneath your suit. Cotton just don't work people. And the, the other thing that's really important, I mean, you can see that we've, he's wearing a Lycra shirt, and he's got something on underneath, but the most important thing is your head. You have to put something over your head to keep that sweat from your face and your forehead from getting into the foam in that head. Because it not only is going to damage the foam over time, but it's really difficult to clean out. And everyone's different. Everyone, some people sweat more than others, so there's different <coughs> ways to do it. A lot of people can go to like a motorcycle shop or order them on the internet. They're called balaclavas. They look like ninja hoods. And again, this is another thing you have to pay attention to because they have ones that are made for winter time which yep. will trap heat extremely. If you have one of those, you will die inside the <laughs> yeah, okay. So you have to get a summertime one. The best yeah, place to find those ones are either these skull caps, which are under armor made, because these are specifically made for summertime use, for football use, or at a motorcycle shop, because those are also made for summertime use. Most times when you go to a sporting goods store, you're going to find the heat one because they're selling it more for the skiers is what it's technically made for. So, again, motorcycle shops and looking in the football section is where you're going to find You can also get them online, too, or you make your own. But pay, pay very, own, yeah. very close attention to what you're ordering when you order your Under Armour components. Make sure that you're ordering something that's made for warm weather. Yeah. Cool it's weather. designed to cool. cool. No, not cool weather. Cool weather keeps you hot. No, no, cool Sorry. weather. Yeah, yeah, cool weather. weather. Um, they also make full body ones too. I've only seen them a couple of times, but I have separate pieces. I mean, you have the whole spandex pants and the shirt, of course, um, and the body top. So those are important to wear underneath your suit if you want to keep it from getting soaked. Um, also, if, like me, I'm a heavy sweater. Wristbands, sweat guards really help absorb. If you have the space underneath your suit, some people's suits aren't big enough to put them on, but they do help also very much absorb the sweat. So staying dry is a big priority. And taking breaks. Changing your arm as well. Yes, change your yes. arm. Buy several pairs, people. It is important because they do start stinking after about the first use. Um, we actually have several pairs for us. And what we do, if we run out of our pairs, we clean them in the bathtub. And we just use a little bit of a light clean it out and dry them out and then you have fresh new stuff to wear, you know? And they dry it's, relatively fast, dude. Mm -hmm. That's what the material is made to do. The hotel here has guest laundry. Then put it. Yeah, yeah and they have guest laundry. laundry. If they have guest laundry, even better, it goes yeah. twice as fast. Yeah. So. Just so you know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any catch we do about uh, maintaining uh, the under armor? Just uh, pay under attention to the Under armor is pretty simple. I mean, it's wash and dry. Uh, just keeping it clear to make sure it doesn't stink when you're putting it on. Don't heat, don't heat dry. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll, the Under Armour's going to have a washing care label inside of it. Some different brands are a little different, but pretty much they're all wash in cold water. Cold water, cold dry again. I wash my laundry in cold water. I don't ever <laughs> wash it in hot water, so um, it's just like regular washing. No bleach. Yeah, yeah no bleach. <laughs> <laughs> all right, storage. 
Well, well, I already know about fans. Yeah, we already covered fans. Um, storage. This is an example of a fursuit box. The, the lid, unfortunately, is underneath the projector because we had to lift it up to look at it. But it's a nice, hard, solid box that can be used for travel so your fursuit's not damaged. But it can also stay in here long term. And they have different sizes compared, you know, my heads are huge. They have <laughs> big old ears, okay? So it's hard to find a box big enough for my heads, but... They are out there. When you get, when you receive your suit, don't buy your box before you receive your suit. Because you don't know what size it is. It's hard to tell in pictures. So when you receive your suit, then you go out and get your box. Make sure it's hard plastic and it won't break during travel. Um, and it's got enough room for everything in there. Another thing we use that's really good for like padded seats is space bags. Very good to use. Get like the jumbo size or the large size. And just stick everything in there, except for the head. Um, some people do. It depends on. I mean, some some hard some heads are harder than others. Um, so yeah, you can put your head in there. I wouldn't do it, but because <laughs> I I take care of myself. But yeah. Uh, just get one of these, and it keeps your pursuit fresh and everything protected. What's up? What do you call them? Space bags. Space bags. They're not space called, bags. well, they're they are called. These are magic bags. Yeah, the magic bag. Um, you know, you see Ziploc space bags now because they bought it out. But, um, yeah, these are perfect for traveling. Keeps it from getting wet or anything like that. So. Also, another good thing to transport you to if you're not traveling by plane, Obviously, if you're coming by plane to a con, the box is the best way to go. It's going to be guaranteed safety. If you're driving to a con, double bags are also a great way to transport your suits. Uh, hockey bags, if any of you own a hockey bag, you go buy one and play against sports for 10 bucks. They're gigantic. You can put tons of stuff inside of them. So uh, another great way to transport stuff if you're not flying. If you're definitely flying, you want to take a hard box because we all know how TSA handles yeah, the luggage. Yeah. Um, another couple big items here. When you store your first suit, don't store it in the attic or basement of your house. Attics get too hot, the heat and humidity will damage the suit, and most basements are too humid. Your, your fur will start to mat and look a little funky. You might grow some mold, even if you put your suit away dry. This, this material does not lend well to water over time. Uh, the other thing is if you're going to store your suit in your box, make sure the box is not something that sunlight is going to get into or it's not a place where that's going to happen because the furs will fade. Most of the time, I don't store my suit in the box. I actually keep it hung up on a hanger in a closet. But um, as long as it's in a nice temperature controlled area where it's not going to get any type of extreme heat or humidity. Yeah, I, I, we keep our hung up. Um, we have shelves in our room where we put the heads up. Um, every once in a while, brush them out, get the dust off of them if, if they are up there for a while. But if, if you're storing your suit box, that's a good idea or a bad idea to put the desk on there as well. You can do that. The desk is definitely not going to hurt the fur, and it's going to keep some type of ex excess moisture out. I would not advise putting mothballs in there, though, because you're never going to get that smell out of your fur suit. And nobody likes the smell of mothballs. <laughs> um, just a quick note, the box that's been passed around, that's noted on here as well, that is a fursuit repair kit. Right over there. Yep. Anytime you are going to fursuit in a con, your suit is going to take damage. It's just an inevitability. You're going to need to carry some thread, needles, a glue gun, glue sticks. Depending on your suit, you might have painted components like claws or noses. Um, carry some paint, a paintbrush to touch that up. But or replacement claws, teeth, you know, just in case. <laughs> carry some safety pins, badge clips, things like that. Especially when you're first suiting, badges come off, you lose your badge clips, things get broken. You break seams in your suit that you need to sew back up. And I probably use my glue gun at a con every single day. Wow, really? Yeah, and that's another thing you bring. Um, not necessarily this giant one, but 
they also make the tiny <coughs> ones. I bring those. Um, just in case, it's always good to bring the, the safety, not the safety kit. But the, one the first thing kit. I want to point out with glue guns and air travel is one thing I've learned is that um, that glue gun, anything that looks remotely like a gun under the x-ray, that bag will be searched. Right. Yeah, so yeah. if you put it in with your fursuit, which is what I did a few times, they uh, won't rip it open and tear everything out and then shove it back in very So well. if you're going to travel with that and you know they're going to search your bag, put, put it, bag, it right on top. Search. Make sure it's visible to them so yeah. when they do open up your box, they're going to see it. They're not going to ruffle through your stuff. Because most of the time, they do go through your stuff, but a lot of times they just open close. So it's not... Yeah. The best thing to do with TSA and packing your fursuit in your box, have a packing method. Leave a note taped to the lid of the box that explains to TSA what that item is and have a picture of how your box was packed so they know the assembly method of getting your items back in that box because most TSA agents haven't seen something like this before and they're going to want to look at it. Because under an x-ray, this isn't going to look like an item that they're used to seeing. <laughs> this, this technique works extremely well. The first few times I traveled with my suit, TSA went through my bag. I put a note right on top explaining how they needed to pack it. And they actually wrote on the note, thank you for explaining this to us. It helped us out very much. And so, awesome. believe it or not, it does work. <laughs>
warranty will be for you. And it's really on your side now that you have to fix the suit unless you want to pay the maker to fix it for you. Um, so make sure you read about their warranty and such like that. And keep in mind, warranties for fursuits do not cover anything that was damaged at a con. If you go to a con, even for the first time that you wear your suit and destroy it, don't clean it, don't brush it, don't care for it, the fursuit maker is not going to cover that under warranty. If, now, if you put your suit on and bend over and the whole back scene rips up, that's a different story. Yeah. That's not your fault. That's a warranty problem. <coughs> Now, the biggest thing, well, just to cover that last slide, the biggest thing that's important with fursuit warranties and working with your maker is the terms of service. Yep. Pay very close attention to the TOS. Read it very closely when you get your suit made to understand what their warranty policies are <coughs> and what work they're going to cover if anything happens with your suit. Because anything else, you're either going to have to fix yourself or if you send it back to them, they're going to require some type of monetary compensation. And it's probably going to be an hourly wait for how that's going to work. Yeah, and you might not get your suit right away because of how many suits they have on their commission list at, at, during that time. Um, I was also going to say that if it's a minor thing, guys, you can fix it yourself. It's very easy to fix. Um, if it's something like huge, of course, you're going to go back to the maker if you don't know what you're doing and have them fix it for you. But other than that, Basically it. Any questions? Nope. I just have one thing to interject, even though it sounds weird. I don't use Lysol or Breeze whenever I long term store my suits. I actually use a ozone machines. Oh. To there's there's a few companies, Ozonics, Log Six, that you can buy for a hundred bucks in a little ozone pump. And you can just plug it into your box, set your box somewhere where you're not gonna be trapped with it because Trapping yourself in a closed room with ozone is a bad idea. But it will penetrate your fursuit, head everything, and kill everything in <coughs> microbial in it. There's nothing that lives through it. So, but it's a nice non-chemical way to treat your fursuits that doesn't require spraying Lysol in your head. But bringing it to a con convention is kind of hard because, well, it's not a very big box. It's not a big machine, but it's hard to set it up in a room or an area where you can actually let it run for an hour. What you need to completely saturate your suit with the ozone. But it's where, where can if, you get it? Uh, Log6.com, Ozonics. They're mainly made for a, a hunting descenting process, but they're amazing at killing all bacteria. There's a lot of water treatment plants that use ozone to kill bacteria in our drinking water. So it's, it's a great thing. You just have to look around. Um, my unit that I use is from Log 6. I think they're like $125. It's, it's great. And uh, they're, they're probably the simplest thing to do. You just get everything dry, put it in the box, put the ozone in it, and you're done. Simple. Yes. <laughs> All right. Over here. All right, any more questions? Well, with all the other first two components except for the head, that's really easy to do yeah. um, because you just wash them. But with the head, with the head, it's it's kind of a difficult and tricky thing. Yeah. I've never really found a good way to completely get that chemical yeah. component out of there. It's just kind of something that I've learned to live with because I know the head has to be clean. Yeah. So there are a couple of first suit makers out there that do say that their heads are machine washable, but I'm not so. <laughs> yeah. Because it's dependent on the machine, too. Yeah. Because really yeah. 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 their, their idea of machine washing might be a specific type of washing machine that is very, very delicate and doesn't do anything that could damage it, and where another washing machine could rip it in half. Yeah. 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 I don't know if this is a big no-no, but just I found putting it outside oh, yeah. for a bit just gives oh, yeah. it some fresh air helps, helps make it better.
I mean, generally speaking, I clean my head and then I store it in dryer sheets. I don't mind the smell of dryer sheets, and the dryer sheets get rid of that chemical feel. Yeah. Yes, it does. Oh, uh, just one comment with the uh, alcohol thing. Be careful with uh, uh, airbrush work. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Alcohol yes. will take yeah. paint right off. Yes, <laughs> airbrushing. Um, for body suits, unfortunately, when you wash them and you have a lot of airbrushing on your suits, it's going to fade away after a while. That's the lame part about it, but um, with the heads, you, you have to be careful as well. Um, it depends on, I don't even know, are they washable or not? Well, heads especially, the airbrushing is going to be on the outside. Yeah. What you're really mainly focused on with the chemical stuff is cleaning the inside. The outside is still done with a, a cloth and some wool light, but even so, it's going to fade the airbrushing. Airbrushing Unfortunately, there's no way to clean airbrushing with fur where it's not going to fade out. So if you have a suit with airbrush effects, expect after a couple of conventions to have to send it back to get retouched. A lot of the people that do that do the heavy airbrushing, but they always are like, oh yeah, you can send it back and we'll touch it up like a like six month or a year thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because airbrushing is going to come out. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> oh, washing machines never ever top load. Always front load washing. Yes. Well, there there are some top load machines that don't have that beater bar in the middle. Those actually do work for pretty well. We actually, we have a top yeah. load machine like that, and as long as you have the delicate cycle, it will work. Okay. But do not do not bend anything past delicate because obviously it's extremely delicate. So. Yeah. But they, but they do work. Yeah. Any more questions, comments? And wash your boots inside out. Yes. Oh yeah, we've already covered that. Yeah. Wash it inside out and make it, make sure it's lifted up.